Whenever I come into the house, I always have Ali sit at the front door on the outside, as well as on the inside, and I step through the door. We're just accentuating the fact that we own this boundary now. She's not pulling you through. She's not rushing through. She waits till you come back next to her. You say, okay. You can pat your leg to get her going, okay. And then make sure you walk through this doorway slowly. If you're going through doorways with her throughout the day, you could do easily do this three, four, or five times a day, in and out, and it would really help her overall calmness level. If you're doing it every day, you'd be amazed at how five or six times a day doing that is gonna, over the course of a couple weeks, makes her calmer just because of doing that little exercise. Okay, so we're gonna go to this mat here. Notice how I'm always doing left turns. Sit. Did a left turn there to close the door. Did another left turn here to have her sit in front of the mat. The way you do this mat exercise is you always have her sit first with your right hand, you pat her chest and you say, see how I'm not holding, I'm not restraining her. So never hold her in place. This leash is always loose. With your right hand, you're gonna pat her chest and say, go to your mat. And then you're gonna say down. And then if she goes down perfectly like that, you reward her. Good, put it on the mat. She takes the reward off the mat. Start off the exercise very gradually, maybe just walking around like this. Just a basic downstay where she accepts you walking around either way behind her. Always do it exactly the same way at the end. You stand out in front of her, walk up to her like this. Make sure that you deposit this on the mat. See how she's not, nope. See how she's, make sure that she doesn't touch her hand. See how she's waiting? Good. Make sure she waits like that. And you'll see as even the next three or four minutes, as we continue this, she'll get even calmer. She's very jumpy and nervous, so to get her into the groove of things, you have to be calm first, and you have to insist that she does this the, the proper way, and then she gets into the zone and starts doing it at a much calmer level because you insisted on it. So if I was just gonna practice this part a few times, good, I'd make sure I was really calm, and I just, you see how I'm rewarding her? I'm just going straight down on the mat and I'm just depositing it, pulling back up. I'm not tossing the food. I'm not letting her take it out of my hand. I'm not fast and jerky, just very calm, deliberate. She waits, good. Every time you do that, she gets a little bit calmer. So I've done some basic stuff here and now I'm gonna try some things that are a little bit more difficult for her to handle. So I'm gonna go in the back of the house. There's a doorway here. I'm gonna go in the hallway. Uh, if you're ever gonna do something that you think is hard for her to do, it's okay to remind her what uh, you want her to keep doing. So since we don't say stay, obviously, there's way less talking in this training. But when you're just teaching a dog to do something difficult, it's okay to remind her down. And I'm gonna go in the back of the house, close this hallway door. You're gonna knock on the door, make some noise. Come back in, she's still there. She gets a reward. Good, still being really calm as I reward her. So that was easy for her. If she shifts her position a little bit like that, it's not the end of the world. As long as she's staying there, as long as she doesn't completely turn her body around. Watch what happens if she's turned that way, I'm gonna walk around on that side and she could very well kind of change her position on the mat if she doesn't because you come around this way. If she doesn't, then you take the reward and you go like this and her body will flip around and then you kind of mark where you want her to be, right? No, don't allow her to touch your hand though. Good. Yeah. Put her back. Very often though, if you walk around this way, she'll flip over and she'll straighten herself out. But if that doesn't work, you can lure her to be fairly straight again. So I went to the back of the room and out of sight there and came back. Now I'm going to go outside. And this is difficult for most dogs to do, so I'm going to say down. First I'm going to just walk past the window, bang on the windows, come back in. Good. Give her a reward. Good. Calmly, as usual. Now I'm going to go do some other things. Down. Go outside. Mess with the mail slot. Knock on the door. Ring the doorbell. 
Good. She gets a big reward for that. I'm giving her a double reward. Good. Two pieces instead of one that time, because if she ever does anything exceptional like that, something that's really hard to do, if it's a big distraction in her mind and she does plays the game the correct way and stays there, doesn't pop up, then she should get a bigger reward. She will know the difference. She'll she'll realize, oh, for the big distractions, that's when the payoff is bigger. And that's what teaches her at a deeper level and she's more likely to do that um, better and better every time because she knows that it's she gets paid better. And of course we're saying good at the moment we reward her and later on in real life you don't have to give her food because she's so imprinted to hear that word when something good happens and, and you'll be petting on, on the head or something like that that she'll barely notice that there was no food. It's really about her wanting to do something with you, to work with you, that that's, that's the real reason why this works so well. And that's why we phase the food out uh, in, a, in a few more weeks. Uh, so that's really difficult for a dog to do.